Hello everyone, welcome to Actuarial Path. This is a lesson on the chi-squared distribution. The chi-squared distribution can be motivated by starting from the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is bell-shaped distribution that is symmetric around zero, i.e. with mean zero, and has variance here for one. Let's say we have a random variable that is the standard normal. Z is normal with mean zero and variance of one. Let's also define another random variable, which is a function of the standard normal random variable. Suppose y is, is equal to the square of the standard normal random variable, z squared. It turns out this random variable y follows a chi-square distribution with parameter 1, and this parameter is called the degrees of freedom. Let's also say that we have p independent and identically distributed standard normal random variables. We have the random variables z1, z2, all the way up to zp. Each of them are normal with mean 0 and variance of 1. Let's define another random variable, which is a function of these standard normal random variables. y is equal to the sum 1 to p of zi squares. This random variable y follows a chi-squared distribution with p degrees of freedom, where p is the number of standard normal random variables that are added up. We will get into the derivation of the expectation, the variance, and the moment generating function of the chi-squared distribution. Before that, you may wonder, why do we care about the chi-squared distribution? It turns out this random variable is, or this distribution is, helpful in making statistical inferences. A few examples are, the chi-squared distribution shows up when you want to make inference on the variance of data that, that is assumed to come from the normal distribution. Suppose that we have random variable x1, x2, all the way up to xn, x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, which are assumed to come from a population that is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma square. Then this quantity, n minus 1, s squared, divided by sigma square, follows a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, where s squared is the sample variance. If you want to make inference on sigma square, on the variance, then you can use this expression and the distribution that follows to make inference about sigma square, such as confidence intervals of the population variance. And you can also conduct hypothesis tests on the population variance sigma square using some sample of data you've collected. Another example where the chi-square distribution can be helpful is the goodness of the test. Suppose you are a college student, you want to conduct a study for a homework or an assignment. For the study, ideally, you would like a good representation of the student body in your college, say by seniority. If your college has 30% first year, 25% second and third year, and 20% fourth year students, from the population of let's say 20,000, you draw a random sample, and this random sample of 500, you would like it to be a good representation of the population with respect to seniority of the students. The chi-square distribution can help you make that determination. That is, is there a statistical evidence that your sample is not representative of the population that is drawn from. And this test is popular and it's called the goodness of fit test and uses the chi-square distribution. Having seen two examples of how the chi-square distribution can be used in practice, let's write down the probability density function of the random variable that follows a chi-square distribution. Let's say we have a random variable x which follows the chi-square distribution with p degrees of freedom, which is the parameter of the chi-square distribution. The probability density function is 1 divided by gamma of p over 2 times 2 to the power of p over 2 multiplied by x to the power of p over 2 minus 1 e to the power of minus x over 2. p needs to be greater than 0. And the chi-square distribution cannot take values less than 0. Let's look at the plot of the chi-square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom, which arises when you square the standard normal distribution with mean 0 and variance of 1. This plot has the standard normal random variable with black solid lines, and the chi-square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom plotted in red dotted lines. You can see from this plot that the chi-square distribution with 1 degrees of freedom, or with any degrees of freedom, takes non-negative value. It's always 0 or positive. The chi-square distribution is obtained by summing up squares of standard normals. When you sum up squares, or when you square a number, you get positive numbers. So that makes sense. It's really interesting to look at what happens to the shape of the probability density function of the chi-square distribution as you increase the degrees of freedom. For a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom, the vertical axis is an asymptote, and the graph is right-skewed. When, when the degrees of freedom is equal to 2, 
the PDF touches the vertical axis at 0.5. The value of the density at 0 is 0 0.5. For a chi-square distribution with 3 or more degrees of freedom, the value of the density evaluated at 0 is 0. But then the peak of the density function shifts to the right. That's the property you will see over and over when you increase the degrees of freedom. This blue line is the probability density function of 4 degrees of freedom. As you can see, the peak shifted to the right on the, on the horizontal axis, and the curve is becoming more and more symmetric. If you keep increasing the degrees of freedom again, the purple line is the plot for when the degrees of freedom is equal to 6. As you can see, it shifted to the right, a little bit more symmetric than when the degrees of freedom is equal to 4. That's what you will see when you increase the degrees of freedom. The center shifts to the right, the peak, which is the mode, also shifts to the right and the curve becomes more and more bell-shaped. The chi-square distribution probability density function is very similar to the gamma distribution probability density function. Recall from our gamma distribution lesson that when a random variable y follows a gamma distribution with parameters alpha and theta, its probability density function is 1 over the gamma of alpha, beta to the power of alpha, theta to the power of alpha, multiplied by y to the power of alpha minus 1 times e to the power of negative y divided by theta. y is not negative, greater than 0. When the parameters of the gamma distribution, alpha equals p over 2, and theta equals 2, then the probability density function of the gamma distribution is exactly the same as the probability density function of the chi-square distribution. What this tells us is that the chi-square distribution with p degrees of freedom is equal in distribution to the gamma distribution with alpha equals p over 2 and theta equals 2. From the lesson on the gamma distribution, we have shown that the expected value of a random variable that follows a gamma distribution is equal to alpha times theta, the variance is equal to alpha times theta squared, and the moment generating function is my of t is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus t theta, the whole quantity to the power of alpha. Using these relationships and plugging in p over 2 for alpha and 2 for theta, we have for a random variable that follows a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to p, its expected value is equal to p over 2 times 2 equal to p, and the variance is p over 2 times 2 squared, which is equal to 2 times p. The moment generating function is 1 divided by 1 minus 2t, the whole quantity, to the power of p over 2. Therefore, we have the expected value, the variance, and the moment generating function of the chi-square distribution with p degrees of freedom. I'm going to leave you with a proof of the fact we mentioned earlier this lesson, which is the, if a random variable y is equal to z squared, where z is the standard normal random variable, then y follows a chi-squared distribution. To do that, we will use the moment generating function technique. We know the MGF of a standard normal random variable z is equal to e to the power of 1 half t squared. We have shown this in, in the lesson that dealt with the normal distribution. What we want to show now is the moment generating function of y is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus 2t to the power of 1 half. By the definition of the moment generating function, mgf of y, my t is equal to the expectation of e to the power of t, y. y is z squared, so we have the expectation of e to the power of t z squared. That is the integral negative infinity to positive infinity e to the power of t times z squared times the probability density function of the standard normal distribution z. I will let you follow the algebra on the screen and go to the last step, then what we have here is the square root of 1 over 1 minus 2t times the integral negative infinity to positive infinity of the probability density function of a normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 divided by 1 minus 2t. Whatever we have inside the integral is the probability density function. Therefore, it integrates to 1 evaluated from negative infinity to positive infinity. So what we are left with is 1 divided by 1 minus 2t to the power of 1 half, which is the MJF of a chi-squared distribution with 1 degrees of freedom. For your exercise, show that if we have independent and identical the standard normal variables z1, z2, all the way up to zp, p of them, then show that the y, which is equal to the sum of the square of the z's, follows a chi-squared distribution with p degrees of freedom.